Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Mental Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the QSP Pelican, a larger uh, offering from QSP. Very cool. You can get this knife right now. It's a very good value. Uh, I'll link it right down below so you can check it out. We're going to talk all about it and what makes it a good value. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the QSP Pelican is coming in at eight and a quarter uh, inches overall, so definitely a full-size knife. We have a blade length of 3.75 inches and a cutting edge of three and a half inches, so a nice big blade there. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Fairly close to the size of the Rat 1. The Rat 1's about a quarter inch longer. Um, also, uh, the uh, Penguin has more of a cutting edge. Uh, how about up against the PM2 and Para 3? Very, very, very similar in overall size to the PM2. Definitely longer than the uh, Para 3, more cutting edge than both. And last but not least, the Benchmade Group Tillian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, uh, and uh, also the, the uh, Benchmade uh, Bug Out. Got to get used to that new dialogue there. Very close in, like, just presence to the uh, Hogue Ritter there, uh, but definitely a bigger blade and uh, more cutting edge. Definitely, definitely larger than the Bug Out. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness. Take a look at that action. Oh, yeah. Thickness up against the Spider Coat Para 3. You can see here this is a relatively thick knife. Uh, definitely, definitely thicker than Spider Coat Para 3. Let's do height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3. Body, uh, uh, pretty close uh, to the uh, uh, overall length of the uh, Spyderco PM2, but a little tiny bit shorter, definitely longer than the Para 3. Maximum height. It's close, but still uh, not quite as tall, even when you include the flipper tab as the Spider Co. Para 3. It's just thicker. Speaking of thickness, let's measure the blade stock thickness on this guy. Those calipers, there they are. They're to my right today. I put them right there so that I wouldn't <laughs> stumble around that. Thickness of the Penguin coming in at about 135,000, so a little thicker than the Doug Ritter, a little thinner than the Spider Co. PM2 and Para 3. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this. We're looking at micarta and stainless steel. You can see on the inside here, we do have some milling going on. You can get my flashlight down below, by the way. Um, and then the blade steel, we have S35VN. What does this thing weigh? My guess is something around four and a half ounces. Yeah, 4.66 ounces. So if you're big into ratios, this is a little bit off. Not something that bothers me, but people who are used to carrying a smaller knife probably will not enjoy the thickness and weight of this as much. Do with that information what you will. Um, what's left to do? Did we do all of that? Yeah, I think we did. Well, if I miss something, we'll try to and cover it here in the review. So this is a good looking knife, and I'll tell you right now, there is plenty of purchase, and it's also a very comfortable purchase that excess thickness, while, you know, that's not going to be everybody's favorite thing, it does give you that feeling of confidence in hand, and it's super comfortable because they've contoured this. There's heavy chamfering right here. This is all nicely rounded down. That pocket clip is flat, and that pocket clip is titanium. I want to point that out. That is a titanium pocket clip, which is pretty cool. This is a super comfortable knife. It's pretty straightforward. There's nothing crazy going on here. You're comfortable, and you've got plenty of room. I've got plenty of room to spare, so full four finger grip, uh, choking up there underneath the flipper tab. There is jimping here, but it's not aggressive. It's just really comfortable. The jimping that comes out on the spine extends where you're actually going to put your thumb, which is nice. That's a mark that a lot of companies miss, right? Uh, so I appreciate that. The disengagement of the liner lock is easy because they've carved that area out. And this area is, well, it is, it's got some texturing there. It's not super aggressive. This has no double clutch and it has wonderful action. I was not convinced that this was ball bearings because I looked in there and I was like, that looks like phosphor bronze. And, and QSP is known for having great action with phosphor bronze. So I did take this apart and confirm exactly what it says on the card, which I'll show right here, that this knife is ball bearing. It's silly not to trust that, right? It's just looking in there, you see the edges and you're like, that doesn't look, there, I couldn't see the little bearings. They're actually countersunk inside of the, the housing, right? 
So I took it apart to make sure, and it is, it's definitely running on uh, bearings. But the action is just so smooth. It's ridiculous. This, this is great. Some of that is being assisted by the weight and mass of the blade, but it's great. And the flipping action is also great. This is a comfortable flipper tab. You can light switch it, or you can push button it if you want to. It's, it's really nice. Uh, the action is just fantastic. QSP does a great job with action. Um, yeah, ergonomics great, no issues there. This particular version has a tumbled blade. I don't know if you have options for different blade styles. I know you have different options for micarta uh, colors. It's tumbled and the tumbling looks great. I'm sick of satin finishes, so the tumbled finish is welcome. S35VN, very happy about that, especially considering what the price is. This is a large Warncliffe blade. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, this is better for regular day-to-day -day stuff. It's a larger knife, so maybe more of an outdoor work knife, right? Maybe you just like the EDC, a larger knife. In any case, I am super appreciative of that blade shape. These are easy to sharpen. S35VN in and of itself is pretty easy to sharpen, but the blade is just one long, continuous, straight edge, right? Easy to sharpen. The uh, tip is pointed down, so your draw cuts, things like that, getting into packages, stuff that we normally do with our knives, uh, just general EDC. It's going to be great. The Warncliffe is not going to be the best at everything, though. So if you do more specialized cutting tasks, then maybe the Warncliffe won't work out as well for you. It depends on what you're doing. There's a flat that carries out about 75% the length of the blade. Plenty of robustness carried out to the tip. I wouldn't worry too much about damaging that. There's quite a bit of material out there. Drops down to a reasonable cutting edge. It's not a laser beam. It's definitely sharp and thin enough for EDC. Uh, so do with that information what you will. I think the overall presentation of this knife is good too. It's nice looking. You have to kind of like a Warncliffe blade, but uh, yeah, I think it's nice looking. There's a, um, uh, oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't do the hardware check. That's what people were yelling out during that normal preview. So you didn't do the hardware check. You can get my tools down below. Tools are very inexpensive, very recommendable. It's in the My Tools section of my description. T8 on the pivot, and I've already done all this because I took it apart. T6 on everything else is pretty minimal. Uh, I wish it was all T8, but it's not, right? It was easy to take apart. No big deal. Uh, captive pivot as well. So that made it super simple. Very happy for that. Um, we have a lanyard hole, if you want to have a lanyard. We have a backspacer that, as far as I can tell, let me get the flashlight on this. I didn't actually take a close look at the, oh yeah, it is. This is G10. You can see the little fibers in there. So we have a G10 backspacer. Maybe it's my card. I don't know. It looks like G10. Polished liners. That always looks nice, in my opinion. Uh, the pocket clip is great. I think it could have, it, it's a little skinny for the design, but I mean, it's flat. It's nicely rounded off. So when you're gripping the knife, it's just not a, you know, it doesn't bother your hand, which sounds silly if you're not a knife. But if you're a knife person, you don't know those, those gooseneck pocket clips just drive you crazy. Uh, whether you're just sitting around messing with it or you're actually out using it, it drives you crazy. So I appreciate that. And again, this is titanium. This costs more money, not a ton more, but it does cost more money to do than a, a steel pocket clip. It's also more forgiving if you catch it on something, which is less likely because of the shape of it. There is a ramp. It looks like it's ever so slightly curved like up this way, but in and out of the pocket, it's pretty easy. I, I don't have too many complaints other than I kind of wish it was a little bit wider to complement the look. Um, but it's fine and it carries not ultra deep, but deep enough. So I, I really don't have any complaints there. This side of the knife is much the same as the front, except it's got the pocket clip. This is a uh, right-handed only knife. They do not have a position to mount for left-handed carry. And it's also a right-handed liner lock as well. Lockout is completely and totally solid. There is no movement whatsoever. No shouldering, but that's okay. It doesn't need to have shouldering on that uh, around that stop pin. That's fine, just a flat surface there. We have a uh, liner lock locking up at about, I don't know, 25, 30%. Like I said, solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right. And the blade was centered when I got it, and I took some extra effort to make sure that it was centered when I put it back together. It's still the case. Straightforward knife. We have uh, an overabundance of liner lock knives, right? Um, especially ones that are D2. So I'm kind of happy to see that this is something that's a little more expensive, but it doesn't come with an ultra premium price tag. You're looking at micarta. You're looking at, no, first and foremost, you're looking at something that's done very, very well. The action is smooth. The lines are well thought out. Easy disengagement. It's a good blade, right? This is a good, solid working blade. Good action. A little bit bulky. Not crazy, though, right? So you're looking at S35VN. Not made in the United States, right? Again, do that information what you will. We're coming in at $117, and it's also got a pocket clip. 
I don't have a problem with that at all. QSP also does the Penguin in similar, if not exact, almost exactly the same, except for the titanium clip. They do a Knives Plus exclusive version that's like 65 or 70 bucks. So uh, is this worth that much more? I don't know. I mean, it's it's examples that you could use that are less money sporting similar materials, right? That one and only example that I just came up with was also QSP. Kaiser also does some uh, titanium frame locks in this general area. They're, they're closer to 150. Uh, I like this knife. It makes a lot of sense and it's super duper well built. Um, $117 does not bother me. In fact, this is the territory that I, I feel like I'm, that's kind of where I want to see S35VN. It's great if you can get S35VN under a hundred bucks, but this is kind of the territory that I expect it to be in. I like this knife a lot, and I kind of initially thought that it was just kind of this boring thing. And to a lot of people, it is. It's just going to be another liner lock, right? Um, but action's good, quality's good. QSP is super impressive on the quality front. Um, in fact, a lot of their stuff, honestly, I feel is severely underrated because when you look at their competition, which truthfully uh, is uh, your Civivi knives, because Civivi kind of has some of that those weird knives where they bump up, and we make makes knives like the Kite Fin that are a little less expensive uh, than they than normal Wii knives are, right? So you're looking at Wii Civivi Artisan Cutlery CJRB. Uh, you're looking at uh, those types of knives, Kaiser. Uh, the QSP knives that I've handled here lately feel better overall on the quality front. And that's saying something because those other companies do a great job. Um, but if you own a QSP and you bought it here lately, you probably, you know, feel the same way, especially in the action department. It's really good. Really, really good. This isn't like, oh my gosh, wow, it's the best value ever, but it's really good. I like this knife. The overall design is great. You have to like a larger knife. You have to like a Warncliffe blade. It has to be legal to carry in your area, right? You got to watch out for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in the market for that, you can get S35VN on a really, really good design with a titanium pocket clip for 117 This is a good knife. This was an easy review. It was a short review, straightforward. I recommend this knife. You can check it out right down in the description. I think that's going to be pretty much it. Thanks again to QSP for sending this in for review. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.